Okay, good to go. Hello, I'm Richard O'Neill, storyteller and author, and I'd like to read you Anna and the Apple Tree, a story which I, I really, really like, um, particularly because I like trees. Um, but this one, I think, the one of the best things about this book, apart from the story, um, are the illustrations by Miranda Smith. I think they're absolutely stunning. See what you think. I'll try and show you as many as, as I read the book. This is Anna and the Apple Tree. Anna lived in the city, bright lights, busy streets and a park with a mega slide. Her mother's new job meant moving out to the countryside and leaving it all behind. Anna was worried. The city was the only home she'd ever known, but she knew Grandad would be moving with her and that cheered her up. Her new home was an old cottage in the village. It was quiet and dark, no park, no mega slide, no busy streets. All Anna could see from her new bedroom window was a big, gnarled, menacing old apple tree. In the daylight, the old apple tree didn't look so scary. In fact, Anna thought it looked rather sad. The next door neighbour, Flory, popped her head over the garden wall and told them all about the village and the problem with the old apple tree. It never grows any fruit, and I doubt if it ever will. It's pretty useless, she said dismissively. Anna still wasn't sure whether she liked her new home. In the garden, Grandad tried to cheer her up by messing about and accidentally sent a huge slug flying towards her. She dived to avoid it and ended up hugging the tree. As they all laughed, Anna wondered if she was the first person ever to hug that old tree. Every morning and night, as Anna looked at the apple tree from her bedroom window, she wondered why it didn't grow any fruit. She also wondered if the tree knew that people didn't like it. Maybe it did, and that made it sad. Did trees get sad? She didn't know, but made a promise to herself that, that she would try everything she could to help the old apple tree. Anna soon made new friends at school and brought them home to see the apple tree she was always talking about. Grandad attached a swing and a rope ladder, Everyone had a fabulous time, especially the tree. Was Anna the only one to see it smile? The winter came sweeping in with bitter north winds blowing across the village and the apple tree was soon covered in frost and snow. Anna was worried that the old tree would freeze, so she crept down and put two of her blankets around its trunk. When the winter holidays came, they hung lights on the branches and boughs and the tree looked beautiful. Anna was delighted to see people walking past it and admiring it. See, other people think you're beautiful too, said the tree. One Saturday in the new year, a lady with a clipboard turned up to inspect the tree. She said so sternly, This apple tree is far too big, old and ugly. There have been a number of complaints. If it doesn't grow fruit, it can't be classed as a fruit tree, can it? So it will have to be chopped down. But it's my favourite tree, and it isn't doing anyone any harm, pleaded Anna. Rules are rules. If this tree doesn't produce at least one fruit this season, it's gone, the lady said forcibly as she walked off. Anna was upset and angry too and looked to her granddad for help, but he told her that the woman was right. Rules were rules. Anna said, I hope they don't think the same about people, and when they get too old, they get rid of them as well. Grandad hoped so too. Anna wasn't just going to stand back and let her tree be chopped down or taken away. She and her friends were going to fight to save it. They knew they'd have to learn everything they could about apple trees. So next stop, the library. The books were really useful. They learned many interesting facts about apple trees, but they still needed more. I think you need to speak to my friend, Mr. Besh, the traveling apple picker, said the librarian. He's someone with real knowledge and experience of growing apples. He was a smiley old man and was happy to help. He told them the first thing they needed to do was to prune the tree, which meant cutting off some of the branches. Won't pruning the branches hurt the tree? asked Anna, concerned. Mr. Vesh smiled and said, No, it's just like people having their hair cut. It doesn't hurt at all, and it will really help the tree. Anna thought that the tree might be a bit scared. So to show it that everything would be all right, she had her hair cut at the same time. The tree the trees seemed pleased with its new style, and it did look much smarter. Mr. Vesh told them that apple trees liked cold in the winter. It gave them a well-earned rest, so they were ready to grow again in the spring. The winter continued to be chilly, 
and the tree continued to rest. Anna and her friends played quietly in the garden, gave the tree lots of hugs and included it in the stories they read from their books. The winter slowly turned to spring and one day Anna saw something from her bedroom window that made her shout with excitement. Look everyone, the tree is putting buds out. Mr. Vesh told her that the old tree might like a bit of extra food, a special old natural fertiliser full of nutrients. The tree seemed to agree. The buds soon turned into large leaves that looked like a shoal of fish swimming in the sea. The weather got warmer and Anna danced her new happy apple song. Grow, grow, apple tree grow. You may be old but you're still strong. Together we will prove everyone wrong. Booming and crackling, rain dashing, sky flashing, a spring thunderstorm surrounded the tree. Don't be scared, stand brave and strong, Anna shouted, worried that the leaves would blow off, or worse, one of the branches. The tree just danced and pranced in time to the weather, and Anna did the same till the storm moved on. The month of May was warm, and soon all of the other fruit trees had their blossom. Anna started to worry as not one blossom of flower had appeared on her old tree. Flory added to her disappointment when she said rather miserably, Told you, there'd never be any fruit on that old tree. Mr. Vesh told Anna not to be too disheartened, as older trees could often take a bit longer to get their blossom. A few days later, coming home from school, Anna noticed something pink and incredibly cool. She shouted excitedly, Look, look, there's two blossom flowers on the top of my tree. Mr. Vesh said, Blossom flowers on apple trees can only turn into apples if they are pollinated by insects, especially bees. But you're in luck. You have plenty of plants here to attract them. Honeysuckle, lavender, thyme and delphinium. Anna hugged the tree and told it to get ready for the bees. Anna and her friends continued to climb in the tree to hug it and dance along with it and when the wind blew the next morning through her bedroom window Anna realised with great delight that the two flowers had turned into two small apples. Anna woke up with a fright a summer storm was raging outside making loud whistling and whooshing sounds as the storm grew more fierce the trees branches and leaves waved around wildly. Anna worried about her tree but as usual it stayed strong and calm until the storm moved on. Anna went back to sleep and dreamed about the two apples on the tree. That morning before school Anna hugged the tree as usual but was shocked when she discovered that one of the tiny apples had dropped off. Flory leaned over the wall and said, I knew that old tree wouldn't be able to grow fruit. Mark my words the other apple will drop off before too long. Flory was soon joined by the woman with the clipboard and a man in a suit. They looked at the fallen apple on the ground and noted it down on their clipboard before they left. Anna was really worried now. She knew that if the one remaining apple fell off her beautiful tree, it would have to be chopped down. Mr. Vesh told Anna to think positively and keep believing in the old apple tree. One apple is better than no apples, he said smiling. The weather was getting warmer and as the ground got drier, Anna watered the tree until the rain came down once more. The ladybirds came after the rain, eating the bugs and the aphids, keeping the tree healthy. The one apple grew and grew, getting bigger than any others on neighbouring trees. Then one morning Anna woke up to Grandad shouting excitedly, Anna, come see, your apple is as big as a football. Anna was excited too as she ran down and hugged her clever tree. The apple kept growing and doubling in size almost daily. It created quite a stir in the village with more people coming to see it every day. Flory, the woman with the clipboard and the man in the suit, looked on mesmerised by the huge apple. That's an amazing fruit, said the man in the suit, clearly impressed. Within a week, the apple was the size of a bouncing hopper. People kept coming from far and wide to marvel at the astonishing old apple tree. The TV people flew over in their helicopter, filming for a live news report. The wind still blew and the sun still beat down, and more people kept coming to see the massive apple, so big now it was bending the branch and almost touching the ground. Flurry came out and said apologetically, I'm so pleased I was wrong about your tree. It looks so beautiful and the apple is amazing. I don't suppose that when it's ripe I could have a slice. The apple was now so big it looked like a hot air balloon stuck in the tree. Grandad and Mr. Vesh brought a special stepladder and a saw to cut the apple down. 
The TV cameras filmed it so millions of people around the world could watch it too. Soon half of the apple rolled gently onto the ground and the people gasped excitedly. Look, it has the shape of the heart in the middle, said the woman with the clipboard, smiling. Everyone, including Flory and the lady with the clipboard, had a piece of the apple. People were still baffled at how such an old tree could grow an apple so huge and delicious. Mr. Vesh knew the answer, and looking at the crowd, cleared his throat and spoke loudly and clearly. The answer is simple. Everyone played a part, but it was mainly Anna. She gave the tree a chance, and she gave it her heart. The end.